Strickland comes out now to Loon. Loon from the centre can kick down towards Strickland. Well, Strickland over the back nearly took the mark. Scott did the tackling. Allowed Gibson free. Tackle. Fine tackle by Adams. A fine tackle by Scotty Adams. And he gets the free kick. Dave, are you going to comment on, on North Launceston's overall fitness? Well, I th think coming here for three weeks in a row is really going to stand them in good stead. They know how to run on this ground now. Bug in towards Richie. This looks promising for Clarence. Open forward line. Beautiful kick. And Richards has taken the mark. And the first real semblance of the open Clarence forward setup. That's exactly what I was going to say, Rob. They really move the ball on. Quick hand passes, get the ball into the open spaces and run. And you can run on this oval if you use quick hands. North Launceston have showed Clarence how to do it so far. Important kick this, Mark Richards. He kicked a goal earlier in the term for the Ruse. Straight in front. From about 45 metres. And he's put it through. It's a class kick, isn't it? You know, they, people think that's an easy goal, but that's a 45-metre goal right through the middle, and it had to be kicked. You know, it would have been a real letdown because it was a good passage of play by Richie to get it onto his chest, and uh, the boy did his job, and that's to kick goals. It was a great kick from Richie, and uh, really, when you look at the scoreline, four goals in today's modern football, you know, Clarence, if they get their act together and start getting a few more position getters around the middle of the ground, they could pick that four goals up in the next 10 minutes and go into half-time almost square with a ledger. 25 points the difference. The tap won by Ahern. Richie again. Doesn't want to kick on his right. Gains plenty of distance on his left. Down to right. Well, right hands it over well to Cooney. Cooney's got a chance for another one. A goal to the roof. Two in two minutes. We're listening. Well, we've seen an exchange of hand passes. Wright has been very good all year with his quick hands. And uh, I think importantly for the Clarence side, they got the ball out of the centre square that time. And it's gone. 30 metres, Clarence's way in their forward line. Here's that left-hand hand pass. Unattended. He doesn't miss too many on the run. He's a very, very good left footer. And look, I think they've uh, regathered the spirit that got them to a final now. Almost 20 minutes into the second quarter. Not far out of it at all. Stevie Wright's been uh, quite superb in this second quarter. He was quite early. Seven possessions, most of them in this second quarter, only 18 minutes into it. Bit of a fumble there was costly. So we'll restart things in the middle. Richards has kicked two goals for the Ruse. Cooney won in this quarter. But North Launceston still 19 in front. Have another bounce. 20 minutes of the second quarter. And the Robins by 19. 53 to 34. Ahern wins it. Good tap to Simpson. Down towards Gibson and Holm. Oh, Holm, good second effort there. Here's a chance for Ron Rob or Loon. They hesitated a bit. Adams, Simpson, Gibson can handball over the top. The old one too. And Strickland will kick. Oh, he's missed it. An absolute setter. And that's two in this second quarter. One to Alden off, one to Strickland. Well, you can't miss those, can you? Shouldn't have missed that at all. You know, quality player, Strickland, and uh, really needed a hammer at home just before that half time break. Oh. Scotty Wade then and uh, Thorne were having a bit to do. Thorne's on the ground on hands and knees. Oldenoff's in trouble at set a half forward, Jim. Reese Jones, Wade tackles him well. The Ruse starting to come home a bit. Cullen from the centre. The Proctor just steadies down the Robins. Sorry, Jim, it was Thorne, not Oldenoff. Proctor goes out to Simpson. Simpson can't mark it. Hawkins gives him good assistance, though. Goes in short to Kremerskofen. And Kremerskofen takes the mark. He can kick to Strickland. Kick number nine goes in the direction of Gibson. Adams can't mark it. Oh, Jones just stood his ground, got the footy. But then didn't have ch a chance to have a look because he kicked it to Dodds. Back to Kremerskofen. Well, his boot's just about old now. He had new ones when he came on because Kremerskofen's got a lot of grabs. Came from Jones. Gee, I'd be disappointed if I still be right. Uh, Damien Buggers let Todd Spearman run all the way down and stand by himself in front of the uh, the weird area for at least a minute. And of course, young Jones did the defensive work for him. Richie. He's been penalised for a throw. So kick going to North Launceston. Premisco then's had a good game. Strickland on the lead. Oldenoff back in the square with Adams. 14 possessions to Kremerskoven. 
Alden off the target. Ahern sits for him. Strickland or Gibson. None of them wanted to grit and grab it. Scott beautifully tackled. Reese Jones caught high. Get the free kick. He's gone on with it and kicked a goal, but he'll have to go back and have a set shot. And it's Reese Jones's kick. Well, it's no use Andrew Scott and Scotty Adams standing there and arguing, Rob, because uh, they both flew in the pack there. The ball's about 20 metres out from the goals. Both of them tried to mark the ball from behind, and it's just basic concentration errors. And look, they've been terrific all year, Clarence, and uh, some of these players are doing what they haven't been taught to do, and I know that for a fact. Reese Jones for goal number nine. And they have paid the penalty. Well, in fact, you're in that marking contest for at least four Clarence jumpers that I saw there, and uh, no one was prepared to stay down. The simple reason that Reese Jones got the free kick is because he was first at the ball. He was underneath the pack, and uh, Andrew Scott had really... He needs to turn his concentration back to stopping Strickland getting the score, and when he's got the opportunity to get the ball himself, go ahead and get it. That's exactly, David. One of the things about winning grand final, Rob, sorry to interrupt you there while you're talking, it's but okay, is to stick what you know best. and not to. You, you don't have to make something up. You don't have to come out and dominate. You just stick what you know best. Nine goals, nine goal scorers for North Launceston. So everybody's had a go. Every player wins a prize. Cullen, the handball was a good one to right. Right to centre half forward. Or her over runs. It comes back and does some good tackling though. That was a, that allowed Williams in. Williams likes a goal. Terrific kick from Williams. He really played on that mistake and popped one through for the Roos. And that's their fifth. Clearing, clearance out of the centre square gave them the start. I thought they were going to fall down across that half forward line. They don't look too flash across their half forward line, even though Brownless has gone there. The couple of goals that have been kicked on the run, the good mark and the lead by Richards certainly should give them some encouragement to go on with it, but they just need a little bit more across their half forward line. Good move, taking Alden off away from centre forward. The kit's been fantastic, but just let Gibson run around there a while and let the other bloke get his breath. Fry in the ruck, Dean off the field after he was met in the first quarter. Clarence get it out of the middle again, Darren Winter. Hand pass to McCallum, then the Shepherd. McCallum's got plenty of time, runs a long way, then kicks to full forward. Brownless. This is a man we were looking for to do something across half forward. Distance shouldn't trouble him, Rob. Only 30 metres out. Needs to take as much time as he likes because this is a crucial goal, or a shot at goal, just approaching time on. Good effort there from Blair Brownless. It kicks like his brother who put it over the top of the grandstand. Beyond the mountain where that cable car is due to be. OK, Blair Brownless has kicked a goal for Clarence. This has been a great second quarter. It's a terrific game of footy. This is a good game of footy. We've been uh, singing the praises of North Launceston quite rightly because there hasn't been a lot to say about Clarence. And uh, they've got to be very careful here not to be uh, biased. But uh, I think I've been very fair to North. They've been terrific. But uh, two goals in it. And uh, we've got what we hoped. And that's a great grand final. Lynch has come onto the ground, Rob, and uh, Roney's gone off for North Launceston. So the Roos can sniff that they're back into it. 14 points the difference. And if they go into half time, only about a goal down, I think they'd be pretty happy with their performance. So the Roos into attack again. Three kicks picked out. And the Roos have it. So Stevie Wright at centre half forward. There's a Clarence player free. And it's Richie. Oh, well, Rowan Thorne's down again like Wade. He got him here uh, slightly off the ball. And now Peter Ricci's taken the mark and gone straight over the top of him. OK, so Peter Ricci will kick from centre-half forward. This will bring the margin back to eight points. Ricci. It's a long kick. It's an accurate kick. It's another Clarence goal. And they were five down. Now the margin eight points. Kick six for the quarter, Rob. Kick six one, and uh, North Launceston haven't been out of it. They've kicked four. Terrific comeback. It's just that two goal turnaround we're talking. You know, even though you fall down, you only need another two, and you're back in the game. We we'll called it just before uh, the 15 minute mark. But they weren't out of it. They're certainly back in business now. Eight points the difference. Clarence coming back. And we welcome our viewers to Southern Tasmania with the news that eight points the, the difference here. 
and North Launceston are in front. They were five goals in front. Welcome our viewers to the south with the news that there is uh, only eight points in what's been a very, very exciting grand final and North Launceston in front by that margin, but Clarence have pegged them back. Kick from Strickland, he's missed a couple, kicks for goal, he missed again. And he wouldn't be too happy about that either with Michael Strickland. He's got one goal in the first quarter and a couple of behinds as well. But the Robins still in the lead, 61 playing 52 and they've done it pretty well, Gary Davidson. Well, they have. If, uh, they started very well, North Launceston. But due credit to the Clarence side, they've come back with a vengeance in the last, only in the last uh, 12 minutes of football, I would say. So Adams, he was on at centre half forward, opening the game up. Now he's at full back, and he'd be ruining the day he did that. The mark taken by Aldenoff. A real surprise when Tim Aldenoff took the ground. He's got one goal. Missed uh, a goal that he uh, normally would have bagged easily, just about in his sleep. And he's going to kick from about 35 yards out for what could be his second goal. Only one pace, has a shot for goal of beauty. The Robins hit back. 67 playing 52. And Robbie Shaw, he's been a good a risk bringing Tim Aldenoff in, but uh, in the first half it's paid off, hasn't it? Well, we spoke about it before. The game on, look, if he's 100% fit and lacking match practice, you can get away with it. I'm sure you can because he needs a one-up effort, a lot of adrenaline, and the young bloke could be keen, and he's been terrific. Look, and I was just going to say before, when Scott Adams had the ball for kick-off, they really needed some smart kick-off situation to get the ball out of the danger area. And what does he do? He kicked it to Waldenoff. And they go forward again, North Launceston. Gibson, bowled over. Lynch on the field, gets it to Reese jones Beautiful hand pass from Reese jones to Spearman. He wants to kick a goal, Todd. Has a shot, and it won't get the distance. Adams back there to save the day for the Roos. Hasn't been a bad move. It's brought Adams into the game, and Brownless has got a couple of touches, and both were pretty quiet early. We've had 18 goals in the first half, and we're well into time on. About 28 minutes of the second quarter gone. Adams out towards half-back. Bug got the sit. Went underneath it a bit. Kremisko then taps it forward. It's not Kremisko that it's oh, old. Boy, he's been brilliant. Oh, and he's nice. kicked the goal! What a kick! What an individual effort! And they've kicked the last couple after Clarence got within eight points. And Old has done that twice this quarter. He's two, kicked two fantastic goals on the run. The other one had bounced in the goal square and dribbled through. But he did it all on his own merits. And this time got past the tackle of, of Holm. Sized it up. Very hard place to kick goals from in front of that scoreboard pocket, but it looked very easy for Graham Rolls. And I've been right behind them, Dave, riding them right through. They're terrific goals, and I'm sorry I'm getting really excited here, Rob. Yeah, we've got to settle the big fella down, big <laughs> Robbie Shaw. He, uh, he's pretty toey. We've got a couple of coaches up here, haven't we? Fitzroy, North of the Hobart. Thank you, Coach Rob Waters. The under nine table tennis team, Jim. That's a victory as well, so you can't forget that. Coaches everywhere. Get on with the game, okay. It's a great game. Want to uh, get back into this game because North Launceston, uh, after they had a bit of a shake uh, about five to six minutes ago, when it looked as though the Roos were getting back into the game, the Robins have steadied. Three goals, three the difference now. Only a couple of minutes to go in this quarter of football for half time. Richie pushes them out of the way with strength. Kicks down to full forward. Richards. Oh, he gets bowled over. 50. There's a 50 metres. You can shoot from dead in front because it's certainly not going to be 50 metres to the uh, to the goal line. So Gene Fair will square him up. And he'll have his shot from the top of the goal square. Well, Todd Spearman poked a face, wasn't he? But this is the free kick again. Good effort by young Richie. It was good a good mark, but I don't think Todd had any... Uh any other alternative there and certainly uh, you know it's a grand final and it's a goal as well the ruse ninth on the siren so they couldn't have asked for a better finish 9 4 58 clarence 11 7 73 and it was a seven goal quarter to the ruse and a six goal quarter to north launceston so what a great first half of football we've had well they got within eight points uh, clarence and we're doing it very well they really uh, came back hard as we expected them to do. They settled down, they got their players in some settled positions and they uh, reaped the rewards. Wright came into the game, had some quick hand passing, got the game opened up and running. But then of course, when they uh, thought they had it going into that half-time break, North Launceston banged on a couple of quick goals at goal by Olds just before the uh, the bell it was an absolute crackerjack goal. And in my mind, probably one of the goals of the day. What would you do at half-time, Shuri? You've, uh, You've come back hard. You've had a, a seven-goal quarter. The other side's picked up six. 
Are there any moves that need to be made? Well, I don't know about moves. I think uh, what right he's got to be very... Uh, well, well, what he has to do is, A, get some of these players like Cooney to uh, Holdsworth, who's been disappointing, uh, get them back into the game, just quietly talk to them. But he's got to cut out these undisciplined act and these off-the-ball chitter-chat that's going on between players, which is a lack of concentration. I've got no doubt they can win the game. I've got no doubt North Launceston can win the game. So we're in a terrific situation. But what, Graham, uh, what Stephen Wright has to do is got to settle down a couple of these hotheads and it's pleasing to see that although there's a lot of media speculation on winter, he has been one of their good players. He has attacked the ball hard. And there's been other players like Andrew Scott that have lost their concentration. Well, let's now contrast the various dressing rooms. North Launceston, I imagine, would be very happy at uh, half-time, although they only lead now by 15 points. And that's the Robins coming in. This is their best ever chance of winning a statewide league grand final. Don't you worry about that. And they're in the North Hobart dressing rooms. Isn't that a touch ironic? Because North Hobart were uh, one of the bogey sides in their two previous uh, statewide league grand finals and you just calm them down and now to Clarence and uh, plenty of colour in there too and many people in there Rob for mine some of those spectators I think the players really need to be by themselves so that they can uh... yeah it's, it's a very good point I, I can't see nothing wrong with some past players and all that going in uh, before the game and leaving before the warm up but that to me, this is a very, very important time. This is the crunch time, this next 15 minutes for the Clarence Football Club. And politely, if I was right here, I'd be asking them to leave the room so I can talk to my players just eyeball to eyeball, concentrate. They can't have any distractions because they're right in the game. People walking around there as though they're, they're bloke in the hat there. Get him out of there. Yeah, it's like a roster game, and really, there's, there's so much at stake for this club because they've been in the final series and, uh, and have blown it. Um, you know, I know, sure, you'll be keeping your fingers crossed that they're not going to blow up. They're certainly in the game, but I'd be looking for the players to be focusing on the football rather than having people uh, calling out things over the fence from behind the... Uh, in that 15-minute passage of play that they're good enough and we know they're good enough, and uh, if they just keep working away and working away and being disciplined with the performance, Wright's lifted his work rate, Richie's lifted his work rate, then they can win it. There's no doubt about that. Uh, let's now go with the first quarter highlights here, fellas. These are the highlights from uh, just the first quarter only. We see Stevie Wright uh, getting a few possessions. Andrew Scott, we've been a bit critical of his approach, not at the football, but at the man. Holdsworth, uh, very good at crumbing that first goal off the deck. Came down well. He needs to lift his game. He's got the job on Krimis Gothen and really does need to start getting into the possessions to uh, to give this Clarence side a lift. The highlights really would have all been North Launceston. Big C. Todman. He'd run down from the back pocket. Scott Wade was his...